Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about <clears throat> the impossible. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, have you ever been asked to build something that was impossible? And the short answer is yes, I have. So the basically what uh, I was asked to do, I, uh, I was out having some dinner with one of my oldest and dearest friends and his wife and we were talking about you know stuff and all of a sudden we kind of drift into oh Frederick is a programmer he writes code and builds things and makes weird little videos on the internet as well mostly it was about coding though and then we started talking about or rather I got the question Frederick how is it that how do you figure out like what needs to be built and I try to explain that the way that I have ideas or that I get an idea for a project or something that I want to create is by listening to people. I listen to their problems usually. That's the, one of my favorite things to do. Well, not necessarily to listen to people's problems, but I really, really like hearing somebody's thoughts on something. One of my favorite exercises is to ask a hypothetical question to somebody. I ask, you know, or let's take an easy one. If you could go back in time and kill Hitler, would you? And then just hear people reason about that. Because when you hear somebody reason, like you can hear their thought process about things, you get to know them at a much deeper level than you get from asking how the weather is or what they say, feel about the weather. Real real emotions, real thoughts, real processes in the minds of people is something that I enjoy listening to. So when you hear somebody complain, I argue that that's one of the most powerful ways for you to get ideas for a startup, get ideas for a project, get ideas in general. Because when people complain, they are complaining because they're unhappy about something within their life. And usually they, uh, they have no clear, they don't really have a clear vision of what it is that they need in their life to solve this problem. They can identify the problem, but not the solution. That's where the technical skills come in. Because if I can hear somebody complain about their day and say that this thing here is absolutely shit, it works, or uh, this system here is really shit and it is really, really bad, then I just ask them, well, well, what's so horrible about it? And then I ask them like, okay, well, like I have to do this and that, and then I have to do that, and I just want to be able to do that, and then I go, well, maybe I could put something together that solves that problem. And all of a sudden we have an idea, right? So my friend's wife kind of gets into this idea like, oh, oh, that's pretty cool. So then she, she, she starts thinking like she kind of said, uh, we, we keep on talking and she, I think she sits and thinks to herself for, I don't know, it felt quite a long time, right? And all of a sudden she says, well, you know what? I have something that would be pretty cool that if I could do. So I have all of these different thoughts, right? And I know that, you know, they are good thoughts and I have ideas and stuff like that, but I'm really bad at connecting the pieces and like making it clear to myself what this great idea that, I'm ha what, that I have is. It would be so great if I had an app or something like that where I could like record all my, all my thoughts and then like the system just puts it together to, to, to make sense of it all. Is that something that you could build, Frederick? And so I, start, I thought about that because the request, uh, I, I need, I, it's important to me to communicate to, this, to, to, to my friend's wife how, why this is a big, why this is such a tricky thing to solve. So I explained to her, well, you see, the problem here is that the, there is no computer today, there is no way for a computer to understand the complexities of semantics in, in the way that a human understands it. In other words, you can't tell a computer today to go and learn how to say for the sake of argument to learn how to connect how physics correlate to becoming a doctor because the only people who understand that that or chemistry or anything like that 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 relates to being a doctor or like how to apply these to these two different fields how to connect these two very different concepts together into one something that makes a more holistic uh, creates a more holistic understanding of something like medicine is like that, that's what a human's brain is able to do we can create associations between different concepts but a computer has doesn't have the ability to make that correlation that is where machine learning comes in where 
basically what it does is that, it, well, what we can do with machine learning is that we can, through some type of feedback system, train a computer to be able to understand what makes sense to a human. But the computer does not necessarily understand that, like, a, let's call it a philosophical level that these thoughts that you have maybe you have a few thoughts about oh it would be cruel if we had some ballerina like ba i like ballet and then i like shoes and then they this then the computer has no uh, no way of knowing that hey you know what maybe the best way for you to make some extra cash because you're low on your bank account is to invent some type of new shoes for ballet like you could in theory generate that you could just try to use some type of very primitive way of creating these associations through machine learning and then i could create a feedback system for you the way you need to sit and say oh it's basically just random in the beginning it just tries to connect something and then you say oh yeah this is this is something that makes sense to me this doesn't make sense but the way the, the because it, because there is no box, there's no delimit, uh, limitation on what we're trying to train the computer to do here, right? because human thought could include anything. I mean, usually when we apply machine learning, it is in a very specific type of problem area, like it's one, it's economics, it's stock trading or something like that. It's a very specific thing that you're dealing with. What we're talking about is the human mind, like anything that you could possibly conceive should be possible to connect together and make, make some type of holistic semantic understanding uh, or something that makes sense at least to, to a human to create a genius. I, I basically, well, in essence, that is, uh, at least from my perspective, what it means. It means that you would create a computer that can have a genius idea. And there is no computer that has creative thought today. You can mimic creati creativity through having enough data. Usually it's something that I, I told her like based on this idea is that there is only, a, it's really in my opinion, it's only a matter of time until the music industry gets disrupted or whatever to the point where it's almost pointless to have record companies because with machine learning and with computers and the vast collection of music that we have today. It's really only a matter of time until you can generate new songs based on your own favorite playlist. Like just completely create a new song uh, just because you have enough data, because you can use all of these different tracks to create something new because you see a pattern in the preferences of this individual. And acquiring that m amount of data just for music has taken years it, and st we're still not there just yet it's taking quite some time and then i explained to her so you can imagine how hard it would be for me to gather up basically all of your life history and all of humanity's life history in order to create a, a machine learning algorithm or some type of intelligent computer that can take anything that you can think of and connect it together to create good ideas for you it is it's basically, I'm not saying impossible, but it would be pretty close to impossible because I would have to solve some of the most fundamental problems with even things about us humans that we don't even understand ourselves. Like we don't actually always understand ourselves where we get good ideas from. So she kind of started understanding like this, the, the size of the problem and yeah, so what I want you to take away from this is pretty much that that is probably the most impossible thing somebody's ever asked me to build. A computer that ha that can take a human's idea, basically like any thought that you have and create good ideas. It's, uh, it's pretty much like asking for a hit song generator. You know, I would say it's easier to create a hit song generator or a hit movie generator. Well, movie is a hard thing as well, but let's say hit song. At least hit song generator is easier to, gen to create than a good idea generating app. But if you know of a way of, of building it, I have a lovely young woman who really needs that application built quickly. Have a great day.